Well, I'm about to cross the 150 foot gap in the Rideau Canal on the LaSalle Causeway in Kingston, Ontario. And I'm going to be crossing what is a temporary bridge replacing a previously rather historical 107 year old Heel Trunnion Bascule Bridge designed by Joseph Strauss, the engineer who was the chief designer of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. It's an interesting story of how the bridge was designed, how unique it was, and what led to its downfall and ultimate demolition. So follow along and enjoy the tale from Kingston, Ontario. History as it happens. For several decades after the Rideau Canal opened in 1832, a simple bridge served to cross the Cataraqui River. But as the First World War raged in Europe, the time came for a more permanent solution. A new causeway would link the two sides of the city, with one very important feature being a lift bridge, allowing access for shipping to the inner harbour. It would be fabricated in the Hamilton Steelworks, Ontario, to a design made famous by Joseph Strauss. Strauss graduated from the University of Cincinnati in 1892 with a degree in civil engineering. He had an early interest in bascule or seesaw bridges, but when his ideas about the use of concrete as a counterweight were rejected by the firm for which he was working, he moved to Chicago and started his own company. The early 20th century legacy he left behind has led to Chicago becoming known internationally, besides the Windy City, as the City of Bridges. Strauss would go on to build many bridges around the world, including this one in Toronto, which still stands, and even bridges as far afield as St. Petersburg in Russia that leads across the Neva River to the Winter Palace. However, it's the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco for which Strauss will be most frequently and notably remembered. Invited to produce designs in 1921, he would submit the final plans which had been amended nine years later in 1930. Built in four years, between 33 and 37, it's entirely appropriate, therefore, that at the end of the bridge, a memorial to the engineer stands to this day. By now you might be wondering, what made our bridge so special? And it wasn't just the sound made by traffic passing over the grating. The answer is to be found in this steel rectangle, bounded by four pivot points, or trunnions. The fixed trunnions are at the counterweight and ground level, and we'll explain the operation of the rectangle and the bridge in just a moment. Before discussing and demonstrating the patented operation of the bridge that made Strauss so popular, let's look at one final component. This is the rack and pinion drive arm responsible for moving the bridge through its lift cycle. Electric motors in a drive shed nestled between the sides of the bridge drove cogs on either side that propelled the arm to lift the bridge. If you pay close attention to the steel rectangle as the bridge operates, you can see the true genius of Strauss' patented invention. The way the rectangle moves permits the centre of gravity of the bridge deck and the counterweight to approach one another, 
reducing the need for excessive weight in the counterbalance, and also eliminating the need for a pit into which it could fall, as had been the case before his design. The success of the 1909 patent can be judged by its continued employment to this day. The bridge has seen some notable visitors. Like this large and very capable fireboat produced by Metalcraft Marine, a world leading workboat manufacturer, and dependent on access to the lake for sea trials and testing of larger vessels. Many larger commercial vessels also rely on access above the causeway to the Davis Dry Dock, which is the only one serving eastern Ontario, when mandatory inspections are required. A lot of coming and going can be involved, and any delay attracts a considerable cost. Ferries serving a number of local communities are amongst those directly affected. Sailing vessels with their taller masts requiring attention or service have also been regular visitors to the areas north of the causeway. It should be easy to understand that any structure over a hundred years old required attention and rehabilitation from time to time. Concrete work in 2022 gave way to a major rehabilitation effort in 2023, with work taking place to replace or refresh all the major components, including much of the bridge deck and the counterweight. The major advances and improvements gained in several months of hard work came to nothing when on March the 30th a miscalculation caused a major structural beam to buckle. Situated on the north side and part of the lifting rectangle, the damage to it threw the whole future of the bridge into question leading to an examination of the alignment of all the major components. Whilst investigations continued, a stabilising platform was brought in to ensure that the bridge did not collapse under the weight of the counterbalance. After two busy days, it was in position. Although a decision had been made and a contract for demolition awarded on June the 4th, the platform would remain in place until at least June the 14th, ensuring the stability of the structure. Following a considerable amount of preparatory work to reinforce the structure, the first blows of demolition occurred on June the 17th, with rapid progress being made. And the rest is history fully recorded elsewhere on this channel. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out the references in the description below the video.